truth, love, freedom. How do we, as individuals, find out what truth is, what freedom is, what love is? Can it be done? And if so, how? We find ourselves in a world that is crushed by the weight of pettiness, cruelty, and shallow materialistic pursuits. And in the processes that brought us to this point, a terrible bargain has been made. That realm which gives our lives meaning has been pushed aside and forgotten, trampled upon by vacuous ideologies and empty endeavors. The spirit has been shunned in the very mistaken belief that it was no longer needed, or even worse yet, never existed at all. A hollow concept, propped up not just by false religious institutions, but also a feverish cult of scientism that completely dismisses the spirit and instead replaces it with disconnectedness and theories that dissect and mutilate life. There are those that believe the immensity of life can eventually be condensed down into an equation. And because of this scientific disconnect from spirit, those who believe in this are blind to the absurdity of their pursuit. The evidence of this is everywhere. Deep and meaningful connection to anyone has become the rarest of commodities. And when it is found, even for a moment, it borders on the miraculous. Should one push outside of the boundaries of the material realm with anyone, they are considered to be overwhelming and burdensome. A nuisance to those who are busy getting busy with what they were instructed to do by authorities outside of themselves. Truth, love, freedom. The materialist knows all that needs to be known about them has been figured out, and if not, these qualities can be dismissed just as easily as the spirit has been. An egregious error if there ever was one. Our spirit, however, carries a far different message. A message with lessons that cut deep and compel those who seek answers to give everything of themselves. Division is not a part of spirit, and thus anything less than ultimates is not accepted into its corridors. This is why there is really only one question that needs to be asked for those seeking answers. Are you all in? Unless your answer is a total yes, a yes that comes from the very core of your being, launched forth as a call into the deep of infinity, then you will never find what you seek. One cannot be a dabbler in the truth. No one can understand love by dipping their toes into it. Freedom? There cannot just be empty talk about it. One must become freedom. The spirit deals in ultimates, and those who are seeking quick answers or fast food solutions to these questions are dabblers, and in their superficial search, they will come up empty-handed each time, for they are unwilling to give up anything. All in. How important is the truth? Ask this with complete sincerity. How important is the truth? Is it nothing more than a tepid curiosity? How much are you willing to give up to know it, or to find out if there is such a thing? What is the price one is willing to pay? All in. Love cannot be a divided construct, or else it is no love at all. Love is not half-hearted and unenthusiastic. Love doesn't say it will give a portion today and then a different portion tomorrow. It is always complete and it is always total. This is the operation of life itself. Life and love are synonymous and they are choiceless because there is no other choice. The paradox is always resolved because life equals life. When we meet life with intention, it becomes intense, and this becomes the roadmap to freedom, to live deliberately, all in. This is total vulnerability. And when we meet life with intensity in this way, we claim our spirituality, and all actions become a total focus of intent. 
How is one going to face death? When you are thrown into this moment of unknown immensity, hurtling with a ferocity never before felt, the intensity will be overwhelming. Yet, this is life. Life is this unknown and overwhelming immensity, and it needs to be asked, how have we met life? In every single moment, what is my response to this tremendous thing called life? How did we sing our songs, paint our canvases, visit our friends, or even clean our homes? Did I wait to sing that song with everything I had, only when there was an audience to potentially give me applause? Or did I sing my songs every single day, knowing that I always sang for all of creation, and it heard me every time? Spirit always gives everything it has to life. It is all in. Total vulnerability. Every moment is the opportunity to live life this way, and every action is the opportunity to live deliberately. Every moment is our response to life, and thus our response to death. And when that inevitable moment comes, you will hurtle towards it with ferocity of spirit, carrying a far different message than it expects. Death cannot take away my life, because I am. M. Life. All. In. It cannot take away my freedom because I am freedom. It cannot take away my love because I am love. How important is freedom? Not the type of freedom written down in statutes or bills of rights, but the freedom of life itself. It should be obvious that we cannot defer our freedom to anyone else or any outside authority. This realm proves the error in doing that, for as soon as it is done, one has lost their freedom, which is turned into a set of benefits and privileges controlled by fictional authorities. One must claim this for themselves and never let it be relinquished. No outside saviors all in. The freedom of the spirit cannot be deferred as this also divides it, and there is no longer freedom. One must know it. You must claim it. For too long, everyone has been convinced that they should be ashamed to be alive, truly alive, that you are a sinner on the religious side, or that your life is a nihilistic blip in the grand schematic of the cosmos on the scientific side. Both sides have trained the spirit out of the individual and left us lonely, in despair, feeling lost and incomplete. Instead of telling you that the truth is within, lies are spun as holy doctrine and sold on every street corner where human life has been perverted into a twisted circus act, believing in false idols, consumerism, and narcissistic value systems. Inspiration has been outsourced, and one now looks to insubstantial forms of entertainment to provide it. Its effects consistently fleeting and wholly inadequate. This creates a pattern with ever-diminishing returns, much like the drug user is ever chasing the dragon. The root which carries us towards truth, love, and freedom grows from within us and can never be outsourced. The individual must become their own foundation upon which everything is built. All in. If one would place their whole bet on the external, they will rue the day they listen to the false prophets preaching their sermons upon fields of corpses. They are the vampires of alternate dimensions preying upon the spiritually thirsty, promising everlasting water, and instead giving them sand to drink. This force will consume you until you are spent, and then hate you for having nothing left to give. It divides you, and then devours the broken pieces, each person being but a pawn on their chessboard of contempt. 
How important is truth? How important is love? How important is freedom? What is the price one is willing to pay to know? These are priceless constructs, just as life itself is priceless. The accountant priests would have us all believe that we are only worth just so much per hour, and this has cheapened life beyond anything that can be fathomed. Our spirit cries out to us, What are you doing? In the haste and madness of the world, no one hears its calls. There is such a mad rush to get nowhere fast and to accumulate as much as possible while getting there. All for what and to what end? Where are we going? Humanity is like the proverbial horse that is being led by the cart and it fails to see the cliffs before itself in the near distance. Yet, who has set this stage? What for? This makes for the quandary of the ages, and the answers to this can only come to those who are ready for them. All in. This is why your yes must be yes, and your no must be no completely, which is the directness of the heart. Intention is led through it, and it becomes the choiceless gateway to life and the spirit. How we walk to this narrow gate matters just as much as how we walk through it. The forces of death would have you continually push yourself away from life and your spiritual connection, so that your heart is burdened with regret that you didn't live fully, totally, completely, and that there will be so many more goals to chase after. Goals create the endless jails. And would one not make every effort to avoid this eternal recurrence? It is madness to follow the tenets of the many just because they are the many, as truth is not a democracy. No one can vote the truth into existence. Truth does not manifest itself towards the majority consensus because the weights are stacked to one side on the scales of opinion and doctrine. Just as love cannot be forced into existence either, one cannot command love into reality or simply utilize the words and feign its existence. On the microcosmic scale of the individual, love through the spirit is a total composite. When it comes to our relating with the pets and animals in our life or with other people, it is always a total effort which is brought to the table. Love through spirit brings the totality of oneself to those in our life without hesitation. It is all in. The frustration that one often feels in this world is when the reception and reciprocation to one's love is at best lukewarm. The search for others who would give the totality of themselves is altogether too often one that is done in vain. This is why many who abide by the law of spirit in this regard feel a much deeper connection to the animals in their life, as animals tend to respond to us with the totality of their being, and carry with them no judgment either. This same frustration can exist when there is a lot of talk about love, truth, and freedom. How can one comprehend these things when they have not put their whole effort into the search for the deepest meaning of them? To put one's whole body, heart, mind, and spirit into that search for their whole life. Authenticity is quite easily read by those who have put in this effort, and it can make for a lonely journey when one is seeking fire along a sea of ice. Love is all in, or it is no love at all. It is also an unconquerable force because it doesn't pick favorites. It doesn't lift one thing up while pressing another down, and its only condition is that it must be unconditional. There is no other form that honors its name. It gives, and it gives, and it gives, and never asks for a single thing in return. Life, then life, then more life. Ceaseless and unending. This is its freedom, which abides in truth and is carried by love, 
which forms the trinity of the Spirit, undivided and unconquerable. When I am asked, what price am I willing to pay to walk with this Spirit? My answer with the totality of who I am shouts to the heavens, All in. All in.